I'm Dr. Ann Rogers, and I'm the director of bariatric surgery here. Bariatric surgery, it's weight loss surgery. We think of it as major life-saving surgery. So when patients qualify for this surgery, um, if they choose to have it, they should, because um, the NIH tells us that the average age of death for patients who have clinically severe obesity is 55. So a lot of our patients are living on borrowed time. Many, many things are associated with uh, having this kind of weight. Things like diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, which is um, falling asleep and stopping breathing at night. Overhead. Um, many, many other problems are associated with the weight. They're at risk to form certain kinds of cancers. Strong work with the OG, OG tube. About 5% of humans can really lose a significant amount of weight and then keep it off. Most of our patients have tried every diet in the world. Most of our patients uh, have not been anywhere near a normal weight throughout their whole life. Dr. Timothy Shope, I am a general surgeon working at Penn State Hershey Medical Center. I've been in practice for about six years now. Basically what we're doing is reconstructing a patient's GI tract so that they can now take in less food and then absorb less of what they take in. It all helps them to uh, lose weight. So say somebody weighs 300 pounds, they could expect to lose about 100 pounds. And that's if you just look at averages. The operation is a tool that the patient uses to help them lose weight. Obesity is rampant, not just in our country, but everywhere around the world. It's also rampant in our schools. So it's something kids are learning about already, um, high school kids and middle school kids. Oh, she's great. Uh, she's wonderful to work for and with. I wanted to help people. And going through medical school there, it just became very clear that I had to be a surgeon. There was really nothing else that would do. Which way? So you have to go through college, medical school, and then training. I actually took another year in fellowship to do advanced laparoscopic surgery, so that's 6, 10, 14 years. I guess that's the okay. Thanks for the reality check there. Yeah, it took half my life to get to where I am right now. That's great. You have to be able to be serious when you need to be serious, but you also have to have a sense of humor, I think, about yourself. The stuff that we deal with on a, on a day-to-day -day basis can be literally life-threatening. And if you're willing to work hard and willing to, to do what it takes, I think uh, pretty much anybody can do what we do. My name is Teresa Shank, and I'm an OR tech at the Penn State Milton S. Hershey Medical Center. An OR tech is the person who stands beside the surgeon, and when the surgeon asks for an instrument, we pass it to him. I was trained in the military. I was in the military for four years, so I did three years of uh, actual uh, working in the operating room. I uh, came here right from the military. I've been here for 26 years. I like working with the surgeons, and I like working with uh, different patients, and I also like the staff that we have here. It's very important to be part of the team because without a team concept, you don't work well together. Every case is different. Um, sometimes you have complications, sometimes you don't. But for the most part, everyone works together and we get through the case. A student who wants to become an OR tech has to be very outgoing, um, needs to be uh, very intuitive as to what's going on, needs to be able to pay attention, um, needs to be able to think before they're asked for things. They um, have to have the team concept and just be able to do the job that they were hired to do. I guess I started thinking about it when uh, my younger brother was born. I was 10 years old and he was a twin. And his uh, twin sister lived for about an hour. She had some pretty severe medical problems and she did not survive. But that really got me interested in um, potentially becoming a doctor. You do at least five years of training to become a surgeon, um, an internship and a residency. It's usually five to seven years. I spent five years doing that, and so I, I, when I finished that, I was a fully trained surgeon. And I went straight to work um, as a surgeon. It, it's been a great... Uh, I must say, my training has, was some of the best years of my life. It's very interesting, and you kind of go from being an amorphous blob to being a fully formed uh, creature. I'm Patrick McQuillan, and I'm an anesthesiologist at Hershey Medical Center. Anesthesiologists take care of patients 
in the operating room. And what's involved in that is monitoring all the patient's uh, vital signs, keeping uh, everything in order, administering the medications and the fluid that the patients need during surgery. And then at the end of the operation, provide a smooth emergence from anesthesia and then provide um, post-op pain management for patients in the recovery room and in the hospital after surgery. So there's no substitute for hard work, um, but the education training is after high school, there's uh, usually four years of college, and after four years of college, there's four years of medical school. Um, after you graduate from medical school, then you um, apply for residencies in, in whatever specialty you like, and I chose anesthesia. Um, I guess I could say if you're not a morning person, um, you might not consider anesthesia. <laughs> you, you have to get up early, you know, early, early days. Well, I think that's probably the most important is that um, uh, in individuals by themselves uh, can't do this. And uh, it really takes a team. And uh, as you've seen from the, the video here, we have surgeons, anesthesiologists, uh, scrub nurses, scrub techs, um, uh, the operating room nurses. A uh, successful day is um, when you, you can go home and, and you, you know in your heart that, uh, that you've taken good care of the patients that you're responsible for. There are five incisions. One of them has a retractor to hold the liver up out of the way that's attached to a mechanical arm. There's four other incisions, and I only bring two of these to the OR. So you got to have somebody else there working, and they have to know what they're doing. And while we're doing these procedures, uh, Dr. Rogers is actually running the camera, and then I've been doing the, uh, the dividing of tissue and suturing and such. Both jobs are equally important. You can't do one without the other. You simply can't. My name's Ann Boyer. I'm a registered nurse in the main operating room at Hershey Medical Center. I just think that nursing in general is a very satisfying and fulfilling job, regardless of whether you're in the operating room or on the floor. Um, if you have that, that desire to take care of people, um, it does, it, it gives back. It, every, in every aspect, it gives back. And uh, that's what I like about it. Some days um, are very hectic and some days are very quick. Uh, some days are very long. Maybe you're um, it's very rewarding to know that you are bringing a patient in um, who is ill and we can make them better by, through surgery. It's great. I did most of my background education at Hack on a part-time basis. So that took me many years because I was married and had a family. This is a second career for me. Um, so it wasn't like I just came out of high school and went into college. Um, the HACK program is two years, full-time schooling every day um, for two years. And it was very, very challenging. And I was just totally in awe when I went into that operating room. I think it was a, a total knee that I saw or something. And I was just, I cannot believe they can do that to somebody and they're, and they're going to make him better. He's going to be able to walk when they're done and he's not going to have any pain in that knee. <laughs> and it was great. Um, so I knew right off the bat that that's what I wanted to do. I, I love surgery and every day we still learn. Um, even being here, I'm working on six years in the operating room and I'm still learning things on a daily basis. It's a good feeling when you help someone, when you make a difference in somebody else's life or their family. They appreciate everything that you do for them, from step one all the way through to the end. And, and that just gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling on the inside. You have to be a very hardworking person and dedicated. My day was so full in nursing school, I couldn't even begin to tell you how full it was. When I was finished and I look back on what I did, I was so proud of myself. I, and doing it with a family, which I wouldn't recommend, if you're going to do it, do it right out of high school. Don't wait until you're married with children. Um, it is very rewarding, and I wouldn't take a minute of it back. Not one minute of it. Absolutely. I couldn't do anything else. I, I couldn't do anything else nearly as well as I do this, and I wouldn't be as happy as I am. In the OR, we're safe there. I like to think we're in charge anyway. Catch your coker and you cannot be diverted from what you're doing actively. 
there are other things that happen in the OR, in the room, in the rooms next door to you, but you are in that room and that's what you're there to do and nobody else can touch you. Is it for everybody? No. But uh, I think that you know you can do, and anybody can do, any of the jobs that are in the OR. I might not be able to do the nursing job as well as they do, uh, and the nurses might not be able to do the anesthesia job, but, but there's something for everyone uh, in that room. Antibiotics in? We try to keep the drama to a minimum, anyway, but uh, these are very, um, they're very technically complicated procedures. So um, we break it up into simple steps and we always follow the same steps so that it's the same operation for every patient. We're all working in concert. Every single member of this team is absolutely indispensable. I'm only as good as the team. Yeah, you know, I can't do it myself. I really can't, you know. So the, all the anesthesia people, the uh, techs, the nurses, the surgical techs, circulators, so there's a lot of people involved in the operation and then there's a lot of people involved in the aftercare and every single member of the team is just as important as the others. There's almost nowhere I'd rather be than in the operating room. I, I'm very comfortable here. This is sort of my, uh, this is my environment. Honestly, it's, it's an amazing um, privilege to have people meet you and within a few minutes agree to put their lives in your hands. That's just unbelievable. That is quite an honor, you know, and, and we take that really seriously. I'm really happy when all the operations go well, when my patients do well. I'm happy when my patients walk in the door and then I'm happy when they go home. <laughs> I like going to clinic too. I meet new patients and, uh, you know, they make me laugh. I, I get along well with my patients. We enjoy each other. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Dr. Rogers' neighborhood. There's nothing on earth I'd rather do.